Hello, soon-to-be licensed nurse practitioners. My name is Ms. Cohen, and this is the Nurse Practitioner Board's Review Non-Clinical Part B. So, for the ones who are taking the ANCC, um, you already know that there will be questions that are non-clinical, which we're gonna review. I already made Part A, and this is the second uh, portion of it. So again, this is for ANCC takers. Um, and uh, before I begin, I just want to encourage you all to make sure you follow me on either Facebook or Instagram under Cohen Review, because I'm constantly putting pictures and, and study material, okay, that sometimes may not be presented on my lectures that will help you prepare and study for your boards. Okay, so again, Cohen Review at Instagram or Facebook, just because I'm constantly throwing tips on things that you should know for the boards. So let's get started with the non-clinical part B. And this is the table of contents. Um, the nurse practitioner rule, we have to discuss about educational requirements, State Nurse Practice Act, State Board of Nursing, title protection, licensure and certification, standard of professional nursing practice, collaborative practice agreements, prescription privileges, and then we're going to talk about nursing leadership, uh, situational leadership, transformational leadership, uh, lands fair leadership, authori authority, <laughs> those my pronunciation, authoritarian leadership, democratic leadership and servant leadership. Let me pause right here and just tell you something um, about the non-clinical stuff. When you're taking the boards, a lot of the non-clinical content will be almost um, common sense. And I hope this encourages you to not be afraid of this portion of the test. Um, especially like, for example, the nursing leadership, which we'll talk about, the title alone gives you an idea of what the description will be. And I'll talk about this more in detail, but all I'm trying to say is don't be afraid of this content because a lot of the times you can figure it out by just reading the question or reading the answers. So that should be exciting. All right. We're also going to talk about malpractice insurance. We have to discuss the difference between claims-based um, policy and occurrence-based policy. We have to talk about reimbursement, Budget Reconciliation Act of 1989, the Balanced Budget Act of 1997. We have to talk about the MPI number, what it is. Um, also, Incident 2, Billing and Medicare, and Medical Coding and Billing, just very briefly, right? ICD-10 code, ICD-10 Z codes, and CPT codes. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, culture and nursing. And when we talk about culture and spiritual awareness, where I'm going to briefly touch on um, different kinds of cultures, African Americans, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asians, Hindus, Muslim, Jews, and Jehovah Witness. And then also factors that affect health care, such as health literacy and language barriers. Again, a lot of this stuff, guys, I know you've heard it before, especially in your nursing, um, your RN uh, nursing school, right? A lot of this is common sense, but we'll talk about it. We have to discuss briefly on nurse research and some terminology, right? Institutional board review, source of data, vulnerable populations, the Belmont report, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, informed consent of human subjects, content, uh, consent versus, versus assent, uh, minors who are considered minors, research terms, uh, we'll go over all of these, control groups, end groups, significant level variables, hypotheses, normal curve, mean, median, mode, range, and research design, perspective, retrospective, longitudinal, cohort, cross-sectional, case study, um, descriptive versus correlational versus experimental versus quasi-experimental. Yes, you have to know these things, but that's why we're going over. And more terms, yeah? We're going to talk about deductive uh, versus inductive reasoning 
and I've come up with some visuals to make it a little bit easier for you to comprehend. I think sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Experimental versus quasi-experimental. We're gonna talk about different types of study, all right? Prospective, retrospective, longitudinal, cohort, cross-sectional, and case study, and more terms, more terms. Um, but again, I put them together in a way that you can just print them and then study them. I'll tell you how. But you should be familiar with active immunity versus passive immunity, herd immunity, health, horizontal transmission, endemic, epidemic, pandemic, morbidity, mortality, infant mortality, sensitivity, and specificity. Let's dive into it. So first we're gonna begin with the nurse practitioner role, right? The educational requirements. Now, this is different depending on states, okay? Um, what you have to have is at least your RN degree license and hold a Bachelor of Science of Nursing, a BSN. And you wanna complete a nurse practitioner focused graduate master's or a doctoral nursing program. They have, they have different, they have the doctoral program, they have, which is like, I think it's a year extra, right? And then the graduate master's. Um, and you have to successfully pass the nurse practitioner board certification exam. And that's exactly what you're studying and going for. That's why we're doing this. All right, you must meet the minimal educational requirements that are mandated by the Nurse Practitioner Act of the state where he or she plans to practice. Some states, nurse practitioners, nurse practitioners can practice on their own from the minute they get licensed. Some states require that you work with a physician. And some other states, like in the state of Connecticut, where I'm from, you have to practice with a physician for a minimum of three years before you can go on your own and open your own practice. All right, so depending on the state. But see, this stuff is easy, guys, you know this. All right, the nurse practitioner rule, State Nurse Practice Act. This is the rule book, okay? Each state has its own nurse practice act that you must follow. Each state has its own educational requirements, responsibilities, and scope of practice for nurses, NPs, and RNs. Derived from the state legislature, all right, it ensures that all registered nurses are qualified and competent to perform uh, their job to the highest of standards, okay? The rule book, this is your state nurse practice act. Just look at the title, all right? It makes sense. It's according by state, it deals with nurses and how they're supposed to practice, act, practice, act, right? You can figure this out. And then you have the State Board of Nursing, which is responsible for enforcing the state's Nurse Practice Act, okay? It's a state governmental agency that protects the public's health by overseeing and ensuring safe nursing practices, all right? It has the legal authority to license, monitor, and discipline nurses. Just look at the title, State Board of Nursing. And that's what you're, excuse me, going for, right? We're getting our licensures through the Board of Nursing. So it makes sense since you're going through it. Authorizes to revoke a nurse's license. They have the authority to give it to you and they have the authority to take it away from you. Most boards also review and approve or accredit nursing education programs to ensure that graduates are prepared for safe, effective practice. That's why you're taking your board so that you, the state notes that you're competent enough to perform the duties of a nurse practitioner in a safe manner, but if you don't behave, they can also take it away from you. All right, the title protection. Title protection protects the public from unlicensed nurses, nurses, professional designations, RN, NP, APRN. It is illegal for any person to use these titles without a valid license. Duh, common sense. Title protection is under mandate by the state's Nurse Practice Act. All right, look at the title of the word, what it means. Title protection, what does it do? The state protects your title. If you own it, they protect it. If you don't own it, they protect the people from the people that don't own it. But what I'm trying to say, guys, if they put all of these titles together, all of these descriptions, 
you can kind of figure out what it means. If they're talking about a board of nursing, well, you know it has to do with licensure and certification. If they talk about title protection, protecting your title of an MP, of an RN. Um, so look at the words and see what the title means. So for example, in the ANCC, you may have matching, right? Match the term with the definition. Well, use your common sense by looking at the word title protection let's say that's one of the definitions look at the definition that has to do with something that protects your title okay another example licensure and certification let's go over this term all right licensure is a legal requirement to practice as an np right common sense it is obtained through the state board of nursing you know that because you're going through it and the NP must meet minimal educational and clinical requirements in order to become licensed. You already know that. So if you have like match, crossing a match in the ANCC, licensure and certification, you know that it is obtained through the State Board of Nursing, it is a legal thing that allows you to work as an NP and that you have to meet minimal educational requirements in order to get licensed and sort of common sense, you guys, this is not that hard. I hope this is making you a little bit more excited. If you found this review helpful, I welcome you to come and check the remaining of the review at cohenreview.teachable.com. In this website, you'll find other reviews that I have uploaded covering many systems reviews in with the purpose of helping you study uh, and pass your boards. In addition to the reviews, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're not sure if you're ready to take the exam or not, come and shoot me an email. Let's talk about it. I'll set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting where I get to assess your readiness to take the boards and I can give you some kind of study guide into what your weaknesses are and your strengths are, and we can talk in more detail so I can better guide you into studying for the nurse practitioner boards. So best of luck with your studies. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at shiracohen at gmail.com. Good luck.